chaos and crisis in the nation's capital with shocking scenes of violence and, and thuggery, rioters breaching the Capitol building and the House chambers. It was really unlike anything we've ever seen before. We have firsthand accounts from two lawmakers who were there joining us first, Congressman Josh Gottheimer. Congressman, one of the scariest days of your life? I mean, I have to tell you, I'm still in shock. You know, in the uh, beacon of democracy in the world, you had a, uh, a bunch of lawless thugs, uh, you know, attack the House floor, breach the chamber. Um, I, and I was in I was actually in the chamber at the time. Um, the proceedings had just begun on the Electoral College and, and certifying the election. And suddenly we heard uh, we got alerts that there were bomb threats and then bang, and, and literally you heard pounding on the door of the chamber. We uh, put up. Um, uh, basically tables in front of the door and you heard uh, with guns were drawn and you heard an angry mob literally pounding to get in. Uh, we put, uh, you heard then shots that were fired, tear gas, and we were told to put gas masks on. Uh, and, and then of course we were evacuated out uh, before, as, as they uh, breached the doors. So y you can't believe that, uh, again, in, in the greatest country in the world, this could happen. But the, the other side of this coin is that at three o'clock in the morning, we finished our responsibility, certified the election, um, and formally uh, paving the way for uh, President-elect Biden to take office on the 20th. So uh, the thugs lost, uh, democracy won out. So in the aftermath, calls now for invocation of the 25th Amendment or impeachment. First, do you place the blame for all of this at the feet of the president? Well, then there are a lot of factors, obviously, that fed to yesterday to the to the insur to the failed insurrection um, and and to a peaceful you know transition of power, which is what our country has always celebrated for more than 230 years. Um, but there are many people, including uh, including the president, who called for an over uh, a halting of the uh, transition peaceful transition of power and tried to upend the, our democracy. And yesterday, as you know, and you're showing pictures now, um, the president uh, basically called on this angry mob to attack the Capitol when we were under attack and, and the Capitol Police were overwhelmed. He denied the National Guard uh, to protect the Capitol and to protect uh, law enforcement and to protect lawmakers. Uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's really not what our country is about. You know, it's one thing for peaceful protest, and that's something we celebrate in our country. It's another to encourage uh, violence and an attack uh, of, uh, on our capital. So, so where do you come down on this talk about removal uh, of the president? Well, you know, moments ago, Secretary of Transportation resigned. Many members of the White House have resigned. I think, uh, you know, it's it's incumbent upon the vice president at this point and the majority of the cabinet, of course, it's their decision on the 25th Amendment. But I think that's the right decision at this point. Um, uh, you know, it's the challenge of, of, of that we have, as you know, 13 days until the new administration. And you want to make sure that there is peace between now and the swearing in. And, if, and most importantly, that we come together as a country and unite and heal because we have a lot of work to do uh, beginning uh, in earnest on the 20th. It's, it's something that um, people have talked about in, in the context of removal of the president, either by the 25th Amendment or by some impeachment process. It, I think I heard you suggest that there's a danger of provoking a response from his supporters who seem you know, prepared, even eager for violence. You know, I think we have to listen. It's it's that's not a reason uh, for the cabinet and the vice president not to do uh, to to live up to their responsibilities given the the recent actions here. However, I, I, what I'm what I think is very important is that uh, we stay safe and the country stays safe between now and um, and the twentieth. And but but beyond that, not just on the 20th, but looking forward, it's it, we have to bring the country back together. Uh, as you know, it is greatly divided. 
um, uh, for our, you know, one of the uh, things we celebrate in our country that we're all very proud of is this peaceful transition of power. Peaceful is really important that that's the way it remains, that we understand that when the people speak an election happens and the results and the votes are counted uh, as they were here, that there is a transition, the winner, whether or not you, that's your, your person that you voted for or not, that you accept it. And that's part of what makes our country so great that we have that peaceful transition of power. What, what concerns me here is that, um, that uh, you know, those including the president are discouraging that, are trying to undermine the election, undermine the peaceful transition. A divided country for sure. What is going to be the lasting impact of this? I mean, Joe Biden, as you said, is going to be sworn in on January 20th. But what's the lasting impact on us, the, the country, the democracy? Well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you probably felt the same way when I saw those images and they were literally happening outside the door where I was at, of just how heartbreaking it is, right? I mean, you know, I, uh, like you, I love our country and people tearing flags down, smashing windows, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I, it's, it, it's so painful. Um, and knowing that we're so much better than that. Uh, so the, I, I'm, I'm, here's where I'm hopeful, and you can say that, that I'm, I'm being quixotic about this, but I, I, I'm really hoping that it was a turning point. And I talked to many of my colleagues last night, Republicans and Democrats, and we must unite in order to build a stronger country and perfect our union, and I know we will. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be hopeful here and look forward, and we have a uh, president-elect will be sworn in 13 days. We will have that peaceful transition and we will move forward. We'll beat COVID, rebuild our economy and, and make it past this. All right, Josh Gottheimer, good to see you again, man. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Of, of course, it was always good to see you. Stay safe, okay?